Actress Kirsten Dunst recently voiced her opinion for traditional gender roles, and feminists weren't happy about it. Dunst said to Harper's Bazaar, I feel like the feminine has been a little undervalued. We all have to get our own jobs and make our own money, but staying at home, nurturing, being the mother, cooking, it's a valuable thing my mom created. And sometimes you need your knight in shining armor. I'm sorry, you just, you need a man to be a man and a woman to be a woman. That's why relationships work. Q feminist backlash. A Jezebel editor even called Kirsten dumb for expressing what makes her happy as a woman. Now, shouldn't a feminist protect the voices of all women, even those who choose to fill domestic roles? But these so-called pro-women groups only support correct choices, which for them means running after a career rather than raising the future generation. And this is a great time to be a woman. If we choose to climb the ladder of success, we can do that. But it's very anti-woman to suggest that if a female chooses a traditional gender role that she's somehow mentally inferior or that she deserves to be socially stigmatized. Isn't there enough pressure? If your argument is that it's unreasonable for a woman to want to be a stay-at-home mom since two incomes are needed to survive in this country, well, that's exactly the conundrum of women in the workforce. Even with two workers in the household, people can't make ends meet nowadays. The movement to get women in the workforce wasn't about empowerment. As the late Aaron Russo revealed, the women's liberation movement was hijacked by the elite as a way to break up the family and as a method of revenue generation. Aaron, what do you think women's liberation was about? And uh, I said, I, I'm pretty conventional thinking about it at that point. I said, I think it's about women having the right to work, getting equal pay with men, just like they won the right to vote, you know? And he started to laugh. He said, you're an idiot. He said, you want me, let me tell you what that was about. We, the Rockefellers, funded that. We funded Women's Lib, you know? And we're the ones who got all over the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. He says, and you want to know why? He said, there were two primary reasons. And they were, one reason was we couldn't tax half the population before women's live. And the second reason was now we get the kids in school at an early age. We can indoctrinate the kids how to think. So it breaks up the family. The, the, the kids start looking at the state as the family, as the school, as the officials, as their family, not as the parents teaching them. Anyone can look at the cost of living increase, the rate of divorce, and over-medicated children being raised by the state to see that this plan has largely succeeded at the expense of the family. By hijacking feminism and making it about defeating men, the establishment has succeeded to a great extent in marrying women to the state. Feminism is a top-down social movement controlled by the political class. It's routinely used to exploit the female voter base, all while completely ignoring genuine women's rights issues. The Obama administration, like so many administrations before, can say they're for equal pay, but this is all just smoke and mirrors. Female staffers at the White House are paid just 88 cents for every dollar male employees earn. I, think I still don't understand why you're saying that's evidence of discrimination outside the White House, but the same metric is not evidence of discrimination inside the White House. I mean, it's the same metric. Well, first of all, again, if you want to compare metrics, we're doing better than the public so at large. The goal, you're doing a little no. Better than the outside? The, the mm -hmm. And top Democrats also pay female employees less than men. According to an analysis of salary figures collected from the Secretary of the Senate, female staffers in Democratic Senate offices were paid just 91 cents for each dollar paid to male staffers. Men received higher average salaries in more than two-thirds of the 43 Senate offices analyzed. Many of the senators with the largest pay disparity between men and women are facing re-election battles in 2014. Considering how important the female vote is to Democrats, it's not a wonder there's this huge equal pay day push. Senator Dick Durbin, who is leading the push by Senate Democrats to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act, pays women on his staff far less than he pays men. Female staffers in Senator Mark Warner's office are paid 72 cents on the dollar compared to male staffers. And it's just 71 cents to the dollar for female employees of Senator Mark Begich. It's not just about women and their families. It's about building a stronger, more resilient middle class in America that has been under stress and threat now for decades. 
Well, she's very passionate for a senator who pays her female employees just 82 cents for every dollar her male staffers earn. And there are numerous other senators up for re-election with a large gender wage gap. The Democratic Party, the White House, they don't actually care about equal pay for women. It's already illegal to discriminate based on gender under the Equal Pay Act of 1963. What they care about is retaining power, being re-elected, and keeping women from seeing their hypocrisy. The problem with this often cited 77 cents gender pay gap stat is that it's based on selective data. A Washington Post fact check piece says the 77 cents number is based on Census Bureau annual wage data that doesn't consider hourly wages versus salaried workers. It doesn't factor teachers who work nine months out of the year, for example. It doesn't differentiate between education levels or years of experience. Perpetuating this myth of unequal pay without providing context not only serves to make working women feel victimized, it continues to further divide us. Could this newly fueled push for the feminist movement really be about Hillary Clinton 2016? When there's no race card to pull and the country can no longer be easily divided along racial lines, will sexism be the new racism? Now, if you're against Obama's policies, you are racist. In 2016, disagreeing with Hillary equates to being anti-woman. And I'm not saying there aren't plenty of racist misogynists out there, but both of these are tools used by the ruling class to conquer and divide. And while the Paycheck Fairness Act might be good politics, with both parties agreeing something needs to be done, passing legislation based on selective data that will result in more civil lawsuits isn't good policy. To be clear, this isn't about finally granting women equality. By trotting out their Paycheck Fairness Act, Democrats can underscore their Republican war on women meme, and both sides can shift voters' focus onto ancillary issues while avoiding key political problems, like how to get all these people off of welfare. But that's not the point. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.